this is going to be a little bit of a read along. I'm going to involve you immediately in this, okay? Most of you have a Bible or know somebody who has a Bible, and you've heard this scripture. It's from John chapter 13, 316. Everybody knows that one. So I'll start, and you, you, you join in, okay? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Good job. Give yourself a hand. Good job. No one has ever or will ever love you like God loves you. No one. Let me explain it this way. When you were a child, and I'm talking to the kids too, because sometime you made a picture in school or something like that, and you brought it home, okay? Now, moms and dads, what did you do with that picture? Where did it go? On the fridge. On the fridge. Why? Why did you do that? To show your love for that child. Kids, weren't you happy and proud? That's my picture on it. Well, let me explain it to you another way. If God had a refrigerator, your picture would be on that refrigerator. If God owned a wallet, your photo would be in the wallet. He sends you flowers every spring. He sends you sunshine every morning. Whenever you want to talk, he's ready to listen. He understands your feelings, all of them. He could live anywhere in the universe or outside of the universe, but he chose to live in your heart. Face it, friends, he's absolutely crazy about you. <laughs> the God of creation who can use the heavens as his throne and the earth as his footstool is absolutely crazy in love with you and he wants to spend forever with you. And he wants you to spend forever with him.
transgressions Bruised for our iniquities By his stripes we were healed As he hung there at Calvary He was lifted all from the earth In order to draw
ago, this is what they felt like when it happened. And today, it's how we should feel too. Because what it meant for them, it means for us. you Jesus. We're going to ask the ushers to come so we can worship the Lord in our giving. 
And uh, isn't it wonderful when you have a pastor that forgets to take the offering? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Kevin also, uh, Kevin is going to share a couple words, literally a couple words from Mark and Laura. From our family in Portugal, Boa Pascua. Happy Easter. <laughs> well done, well done. Lord, we give back to you a portion of what you have blessed us with. Yes. Multiply it for your glory and for your kingdom, Lord. In Jesus' name.
Hallelujah. Oh, I'm telling you. It don't get better than that. Hallelujah. Oh, we ought, we ought to do this more than once a year. I believe. I could do this every Sunday. Just glorify the Lord our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'll be reading from the Gospel of John, 19th chapter. I'll be starting at verse 41. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden. And in that garden, a new tomb in which no one had been placed. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. And early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one that Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they laid him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. They were both running. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him, and he went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw, and he believed. Ooh, hallelujah. Now, you know, we all know about another disciple that doubted this all happened. Jesus appeared to the disciples after this, and Thomas wasn't there. And he appeared again, and Thomas was there. But Thomas had said to the other disciples, I'll not believe, I'll not believe until my finger touches where the nail print in his hand until I thrust my hand into his side, yeah. then I'll believe. Well, Jesus appeared with him and the other disciples. And he said to Thomas, you believe because you saw me. But then he said, blessed are those yes. who believe and yet haven't seen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, but we see Jesus by faith. We have eyes of faith and we can see the Lord with it, by faith. In our spirit. But one day. One day. We're going to see him face to face. In all of his glory. We're going to see him. We're going to see him. And, the, and I th think of the last verse of the great hymn. Uh, it says that. Lord, haste the day. Lord, haste the day. When my faith shall be sight. And the clouds roll away like a scroll. The trump will resound. And the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well. It is well with my soul. 
Hallelujah. Glory. Maranatha. Lord, come quickly.
in the virgin birth. I believe in the saints communion and in the holy church. I believe in the resurrection when Jesus comes again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. For I believe in the name of Jesus. For I believe in the name of Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. He said, don't be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus, who is crucified. He isn't here. He's risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. The conqueror, victorious king, and lord over every living thing. They tried to reject him, but he couldn't be ignored. They tried to take him out, but he couldn't be defeated. They said he was dead, but they didn't know the ending. Mighty Savior, he reigns forever. Jesus is alive.
racing to the tomb to verify the news. Their whole world was already shattered. They had nothing left to lose. John was the first to arrive on the scene. And Peter came a dash in it. Tell you what, but the only thing left was a pile of gray clothes. But Jesus Christ has been this just a little bit further. Listen to me. I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 50 says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen to me. I want you to understand that we have been rejoicing today over the death and the burial and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It had to happen if we were going to find any kind of redemption. But I want you to understand, if that was all it was all about, I wouldn't be nearly as excited as I am when I know the whole story. And the whole story is, uh, if I will repent of my sins or die out to sin, if I will be baptized in His name, if I will go down in a watery grave and be buried with Him in baptism, I have the promise of the Word that I will rise up to walk in newness of life in this life, but I also have the promise. We have the promise. Terry, you're going to rise. Diane, you're going to rise. Sid, you're going to rise. Jeannie, you're going to rise. Saul, you're going to rise. You need to understand, each and every one of us uh, that has been obedient to the Word died out in the flesh, been washed clean in baptism. We have the promise that we're going to rise. Amen. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm talking about you and you and you and you and you and you and me. I'm going to rise. Jesus has overcome and the 
Each of you stand. If there is a person in this house that has not given their heart to the Lord, we want you to do that today because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't even know what's going to happen this evening. Thank you, Jesus. It's a crazy world out there. If there's anyone here that needs to be baptized, I can assure you that the water is warm and that there are baptistry robes available. You can literally do this today. But before we walk out the door, I want us to take a moment and bow our heads. 
If there's anything going on in your life you need prayer for, Pastor Dead and I will be right here. We'll be happy to anoint you and pray for you. But please do not leave this place without peace in your heart. Thank you, Jesus. It's okay if you came with a need today. It's not okay just to take it home with you the way you brought it. Why don't you just take a moment and let us anoint you and pray for you. As we come to the close of this service, just let the blessings of the Lord flow in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, we praise you. Thank you, Lord. Uh, give the Lord praise. Thank you, Lord. Amen.